So I don't think I did this paper enough justice. Stellar metamorphosis does gas accretion occur in the vacuum to form gas giants, uh, K2, A, T, and Bravo. It is pointed out that astronomers do not understand the principles of pressure and gas in the vacuum of outer space, nor do they understand planetary evolution. Some clarifying statements are made to fix the issue and fully replace the outdated dogma. In short, astronomers claim that gas accretes onto a solid body like a vacuum cleaner to form a gas giant. To keep this paper very simple, the statement that shows astronomers do not understand what a vacuum is, how pressure behaves in vacuum, as well as how gas giants form, is as follows. And I took a screenshot. I'll read this out to you guys. The birth of K2-18 Bravo. Beneke suggests that possibly this planet formed by rock accreting immense amounts of gas like a vacuum cleaner, he said. This gas accretion will have more than doubled the planet's radius and increased its volume eightfold. Today, for comparison, K218 Bravo is about nine times as massive as Earth and about twice as large. To come to these conclusions, the research team analyzed data from Hubble Space Telescope observations that they made between 2016 and 2017 of K218 Bravo planet in passing in front of its star eight times. This technique allows scientists to detect di distinct signatures of molecules like water in a planet's atmosphere. And I'll keep on reading this out to you guys. Uh, a vacuum cleaner works by inducing a partial vacuum internally, which causes a higher pressure to form outside of the vacuum. This higher pressure air then flows to the lower pressure area through the vacuum hose. Everybody's used a vacuum before. You guys know how that works. It's not that the air gets pushed into the hose, it's because the vacuum is producing a vacuum and the higher pressure air that's outside of it wants to go towards the hose, thus sucking up all the dirt and dust and what have you. This is how vacuums can pull material up and out of carpet in various places. This means that the claim of a rocky object pulling in gas from outer space like a vacuum cleaner to form a gas giant is wrong. The vacuum is already outside of the rocky object. It is called interstellar space and it is a hard vacuum. Any gas present would not accrete to a rocky body like a vacuum because the higher pressure is near the surface of the rocky body. Gas moves towards lower pressure in a vacuum to the vacuum itself. But the astronomers claim exactly the opposite. They say the gas moves towards the higher pressure to accrete and form, of, form a gas giant. This means their claim of a rocky object being able to pull in gas from interstellar space to make a gas giant directly contradicts basic understanding of how gas behaves and how vacuums work. It's very simple to understand people. Vacuums work because they induce a vacuum. They work because they're already in an area of higher pressure and then they induce a vacuum to suck up matter. To claim that a rocky object such as Venus sucked in this carbon dioxide from outer space, which is completely ridiculous, is to say that Venus's surface was actually vacuum and outer space had the thick atmosphere before Venus possessed its own atmosphere. See how backwards that is? In order for their claim for a rocky object to suck in gas from interstellar space to form a gas giant to work, they need the gas in outer space to be a higher pressure and the surface of the rocky object to be a lower pressure. Yet all the direct observational evidence of both stars and evolving stars mislabeled planets has the pressure higher near the surface than its environment, which is the vacuum of outer space. There has been no observational evidence of a rocky object in outer space possessing a lower atmospheric pressure than its own environment. So the analogy provided by the astronomers directly contradicts both basic understanding of how vacuum cleaners work, but all observational evidence of the atmospheres of all rocky celestial bodies inside of their environment. The astronomers are telling you that when the planets formed, they formed in vacuum, and then their gravity sucked up matter, like a vacuum cleaner. It's not going to happen. 
the gas is going to disperse. It's going to want to go to the area of lower pressure. It's not going to clump together all onto the surface of a large rocky object and then perpetually clump together on the surface. No, the gas isn't going to go from an area of low pressure to an area of higher pressure. It's going to go from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. That's how gases behave. Anybody that's taken first year physics knows this. Not only, it's like, it's the ultimate liquid. Not only does it fill the shape of the container, it fills the container itself. And when you have something as vast as outer space, that's what gas is going to do. It's going to fill the entire container. Which means if we see any gaseous object, that gas has always been there. It's always been there since the object was born. It doesn't accrete it after it's born. That's ridiculous. So for the reader, so the reader can get their money's worth. It also means astronomers probably do not understand the concept of lift in airplane airfoils. The lower pressure, faster moving, is the lower pressure air faster moving is on top of the airfoil, and the slower, higher pressure air is on the bottom, causing the wing to lift upwards. The difference in air pressure is what causes the lift effect. So I have a little diagram here. You have your low pressure, high velocity air, and you have your high pressure, low velocity air. The reason why the airfoil works is because this air on top is moving faster, therefore causing it to be a lower pressure. And then this air is moving slower, so it's a higher pressure, so it causes the wing to go up. That's, that's the basics of airfoil. Birds do this, airplanes do this. Um, uh, gliders, you name it. Things that fly use airfoils, use that simple, simple, uh, effect. <clears throat> and I think, no, let's continue here. I think where they went wrong is that they assume a rocky object has enough gravitation to pull in material, gases material from outer space. This is wrong though. Gas expands to fill the container, not just take the shape of the container. Gas isn't just another form of liquid. Gas is a completely different phase. It doesn't behave like a liquid. They're looking at gaseous material as being liquid. It's not. It fills the container too. If you pour, uh, let's just say you have a container of, uh, of uh, oxygen. It's pure oxygen, like in a, in, a, in a flask. It's not liquid oxygen. It's just gaseous oxygen. And you pour it into a, a bottle. Now the oxygen, it'll take, it'll go into the bottle, okay. But if you don't have a lid on the bottle, the gas is gonna actually spread out across the entire room. Think of like a perfume. That's what perfumes do. That are they're the aerosols. They they spread, they expand outwards to take up the whole volume of the room. So not only do they take up the shape of the room, they take up the entire volume, and they become more diffuse. <clears throat> There is no reason for any free-floating gas to accrete onto a rocky object, especially when it naturally wants to fill the container encompassing it, which is a do card, do do card, cold, dark, total, and vast vacuum of outer space. So not only do they have gas accreting against the pressure gradient observed in all Jupiter-sized Earth-sized objects, they ignore the fact that gas takes up the volume of the container, not just the shape. All this talk of not being able to form gas giants in outer space is not to say it cannot be done. On the contrary, all I'm saying is that it cannot be done in the way astronomers claim it is. Gas dissipates naturally from stars as they evolve according to the gas laws and in accordance with the general theory. Gas naturally wants to go from, a area, from an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. This is why gas giants lose their atmosphere. Their atmospheres are thinning because the gas is escaping back into interstellar space. This is what happens to all stars as they evolve. We're looking, when we look at Jupiter and Saturn, we're looking at extremely old suns that have lost all their gas to outer space. And when we look at Venus and Earth, we're looking at the cores of these gas giants that have lost further amounts of their gas, huge, huge amounts of it. This is why gas giants dissipate. What this does is also have a domino effect during stellar evolution. This is very important. When gas dissipates from a gas giant from its higher pressures to the lower pressures of interstellar space, the giant loses mass all but slowly. This is, in turn loosens up the strength of its gravitational field and more gas can escape, leading to more mass loss. So it's a, it's a feedback mechanism, a negative feedback mechanism. So essentially, the astronomers have it backwards. The rocky object does not create gas to become a gas giant. 
What really happens is that the gas loses gas to eventually expose its rocky interior that formed over many hundreds of millions of years. What this means is that the Earth is the ancient interior of an extremely evolved gas giant, which was in turn an extremely evolved star. And we are walking on its surface, breathing in its atmosphere. What was remained of the gas that didn't escape, essentially. Um, so to correct the astronomers, it is the rocky objects that form like a vacuum cleaner. Interstellar space sucks up the gas that the gravitational field of the gas giant cannot hold on to any longer and ex eventually exposes its rocky surface over very long periods of time. This is what happened to both Mercury and the Moon. Their gassy atmospheres were removed long ago. As to Venus and Mars, Mars's gravitational field is much weaker than Venus, so it has lost proportionally more of its CO2 atmosphere than Venus, regardless if Venus is at least 11 to 30 times older. Mars at 25 to 40 billion years old, Venus at 450 to 750 billion years old. It is also what will happen to Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. All four objects are losing their gaseous envelopes and shrinking, losing mass and heat energy as they form their rocky interiors, their new Earth and new interiors. Eventually, many hundreds of millions of years down the road, these objects will take up the Earth's appearance with a very thin atmosphere and life, water, oceans, mountains, and the whole deal more than likely. That basically sums it up, you guys. We're dealing with astronomers that don't know, know the basics about how gas behaves. They're painting gas as of a different form of, of liquid material, but it's not. Gaseous material wants to fill up the entire volume of whatever, where, where, wherever it is, not just the shape. That's the three different phases of matter here. You got solids, liquids, and gases, and then you have plasmas. The sun is a plasma, and when the young plasmatic stars cool, they become gaseous, and then so on and so forth, as, as I've talked about repeatedly. All right, guys, later.